If the vote were taken today, would you vote for the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act? Was that the stimulus package, the so-called stimulus package? I did not vote for it. I wouldn't vote for it today. I think it was a huge waste of money. Uh, it was focused more on creating government jobs than private sector jobs. Uh, and essentially where we are, as opposed to where we were 18 months ago, is the economy is in worse shape and somebody's kid owes almost $900 billion dollars or somebody's kids owe $900 billion that we didn't know 18 months ago. We would have been much better off if we would have uh, looked at tax policy, looked at uh, in incentives that encourage people to uh, waive some uh, taxes or something if you hire a new person, but do that at the private sector level. The answer here is not public sector jobs. Public sector jobs don't pay the bill. In fact, they are the bill. The answer is private sector jobs, and the so-called stimulus plan was way off target. Uh, I was vigorously opposed to it. I still am, just like I was vigorously opposed uh, to this more government control of health care bill and still am. Would you vote to end farm subsidy programs? No, I wouldn't vote to end farm subsidy programs. I think we, you know, we have, we have, uh, we've got to look at those programs so they make sense. Very little of the farm bill now goes to farm to farmers. Most of the farm bill goes to various feeding programs and uh, so many of those are, are meritorious. The food banks, the women's infants and children's program, they're meritorious programs, but, but the, we, have, we have benefited uh, from a cheap and dependable food supply in this country. In fact, the, 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 uh, the whole uh, world benefits uh, from our ability to produce. And things like crop insurance, uh, looking at the dairy programs, you know, I was raised on a dairy farm. You don't just decide some spring you're going to be a dairy farmer. Uh, and, uh, you know, the government has always thought that people had an interest in doing what was necessary to encourage a consistent uh, quality supply of dairy products and milk. Uh, and uh, you don't do that if you don't have some kind of, uh, of basis that people can go to the bank and, and do what needs to be done to continue to be the most productive agricultural economy uh, in the world. You know, most of our farmers don't want subsidies, don't need them, seldom use them. Uh, but to, to eliminate all farm programs uh, would be a bad idea. Thank you. And if I could rewrite this question, I would, but like I said, fairness, so I have to stick to it now. It's mm -hmm. convoluted. Mm -hmm. To what extent do you believe that in an enlightened democratic society, the citizenry should be bound by any type of financial and social commitment to support the greater good of all Americans? Well, I don't know that there's any binding social commitment that government is responsible for. I think the social commitments come from somewhere other than government. Uh, and, you know, our, the, the beauty of our structure initially was uh, that the, what the levels of government did was pretty clearly defined. And, of course, the principal responsibility of the federal government is to defend the country. You know, when uh, Abraham Lincoln tried to ex explain the philosophy of, of the new Republican Party, uh, in uh, 1860 at Cooper's Union in New York, he said government should do for people only those things that people cannot better do for themselves. And one of those great examples, we, we can't defend the country as individuals. And the government should do that. It should do that really well. Uh, public education has been a pillar, but not, not federal elementary and secondary education. Again, closer the closer you get to where kids are, the more sense those decisions are going to be made. Uh, and so I don't know that there's any overwhelming societal commitment for government at a specific level to do things, but that's, what, that's the beauty of a democracy, for the country to decide what its commitments are and how you best meet those commitments. Finally, how would you assess today's political culture in D.C.? How could you be a productive representative of Missouri within this framework? And given that, how will you measure your own success? Well, you know, right now the, the culture is, uh, is, is, is divided because one side has such an advantage over the other side. Uh, and our system doesn't, often doesn't work real well that way. Uh, you know, the side I've been on has never had the kind of numbers that the other side has right now. So it's, uh, we, we don't have any experience in knowing how we would uh, perform if we had huge margins in the House and huge margins in the Senate. And, the President of the United States, uh, but, but we have to get to where we're, we're trying to find the right answers for the country rather than the right answers for politics. 
And the right answers for the country are found in the Constitution. They're found in the spirit of democracy. They're particularly found uh, in, in our, what I believe will be in this election, further evidence of our desire to be a country where the people are bigger than the government instead of a country where the government is bigger than the people.